In number theory, Wilson's theorem states that a natural number n greater than 1 is a prime number if and only if, that is, it asserts that the factorial is 1 less than a multiple of n exactly when n is a prime number. History This theorem was stated by Ibn L. Haytham and John Wilson. Edward Waring announced the theorem in 1770, although neither he nor his student Wilson could prove it. Lagrange gave the first proof in 1771. There is evidence that Leibniz was also aware of the result a century earlier, but he never published it. Example. The following table shows the values of n from 2 to 30, and the remainder when is divided by n. The background color is blue for prime values of n, gold for composite values. Proofs. Both of the proofs below make use of the fact that the residue classes modulo a prime number or a field. See the article Prime Field for more details. Lagrange's theorem, which states that in any field a polynomial of degree n has at most n roots, is needed for both proofs. Composite modulus if n is composite it is divisible by some prime number q, where 2 qn minus 2, if were congruent to minus 1 then it would also be congruent to minus 1, but 0. In fact, more is true, with the sole exception of 4, where 3 equals 6 2, if n is composite then is congruent to 0. The proof is divided into two cases. First, if n can be factored as the product of two unequal numbers, n equals ab, where 2 are less than b n minus 2, then both a and b will appear in the product 1 times 2 times, times equals, and, will be divisible by n. If n has no such factorization, then it must be the square of some prime q, q greater than 2. But then 2q less than q2 equals n, both q and 2q will be factors of, and again n divides. Prime modulus elementary proof The result is trivial when p equals 2, so assume p is an odd prime, p3. Since the residue classes are a field, every non-zero a has a unique multiplicative inverse, a minus 1. Lagrange's theorem implies that the only values of a for which a are a minus 1 or a plus or minus 1. Therefore, with the exception of plus or minus 1, the factors if can be arranged in unequal pairs, where the product of each pair is 1. This proves Wilson's theorem. For example, if p equals 11, proof using Fermat's little theorem again, the result is trivial for p equals 2, so suppose p is an odd prime, p3. Consider the polynomial g has degree p minus 1, leading term x p minus 1, and constant term. Its p minus 1 roots are 1, 2, p minus 1. Now consider h also has degree p minus 1 and leading term x p minus 1. Modulo p Fermat's little theorem says it also has the same p minus 1 roots, 1, 2, p minus 1. Finally, consider f has degree at most p minus 2, and modulo p also has the p minus 1 roots 1, 2, p minus 1. But Lagrange's theorem says it cannot have more than p minus 2 roots. Therefore f must be identically 0, so its constant term, plus 1 0. This is Wilson's theorem. Proof using the Solo theorems It is possible to deduce Wilson's theorem from a particular application of the Solo theorems. Let P be a prime. It is immediate to deduce that the symmetric group has exactly elements of order P, namely the P cycles. On the other hand, each Solo P subgroup in is a copy of. Hence it follows that the number of Solo P subgroups is. The Solo theorems imply multiplying both sides by Gibbs that is, the result. Applications Primality tests in practice Wilson's theorem is useless as a primality test because computing modulo n for large n is computationally complex and much faster. Primality tests are known. Quadratic residues using Wilson's theorem for any odd prime p equals 2 meters plus 1. We can rearrange the left-hand side of to obtain the equality this becomes or we can use this fact to prove part of a famous result. For any prime p such that p1, the number is a square mod p, 
for suppose p equals 4k plus 1 for some integer k. Then we can take m equals 2k above, and we conclude that 2 is congruent to formulas for primes. Wilson's theorem has been used to construct formulas for primes, but they are too slow to have practical value. Piadic gamma function Wilson's theorem allows to define the piadic gamma function. Gauss's generalization. Gauss proved that if m greater than 2 where p is an odd prime, and is a positive integer, the values of m for which the product is minus 1 are precisely the ones where there is a primitive root modulo m. This further generalizes to the fact that in any finite abelian group, either the product of all elements is the identity, or there is precisely one element or of order 2. In the latter case, the product of all elements equals a.